Hi, Sheriff. I'm Mike Chisholm. How are you doing? Thank you for taking the time. No problem. Uh, today is the, I guess, the 29th. Today is... The 29th of January. 29th. Today's the 30th. It's Thursday. Oh, it is the 30th. That's correct. <laughs> I've been asked by Mary of the T-Teams USA to ask you a few questions. Okay. So the first question is, what is your oath to the office? Oh, sure. My oath of office? The oath of office is to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the laws thereof, the Constitution of the State of Washington, and the laws thereof. I've actually even added a few things to the oath of office for the deputies, such as you'll abide by ethical standards, you'll abide by policy and procedures, and you'll make sure that we're running this agency in, in proper respect towards our constitutional duties. So that's how important the oath is. <clears throat> Sorry, do you, sir, have a yearly or biannual um, like testing for the Constitution to ensure that your deputies and those that are below you are familiar with it? You know, in law enforcement, it's a daily change in situations. We have to keep up on every change that there is, every law change that gets thrown at us, every court decision that gets thrown at us. So it, we have quarterly training where once a year we talk about all the laws and, and how they affect the Constitution. So, um, But to be more specific, in law enforcement, it changed daily for us, and we have to make sure that we're up on each and every new change of interpretations of the laws that we enforce. I can understand that. I was a police officer in Oregon for a short period of time, and I know how fluid it can be. Next question from them, from the TT. <clears throat> and I'm from Hawaii, so if I don't enunciate my words correctly, forgive me. That's fine. <laughs> I just, and I just moved up here to Spokane in June. Anyway, how important is your oath of office under Article 6 of the Constitution? And it reads, the senators and representatives before mentioned and the members of the several states, legislatures, and all executive and judicial offices, both of the U.S. and of the several states, shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support this Constitution. But no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States. How do you feel about that? It goes back to the oath office in general. You're, not only is it outlined in the Constitution that you take an oath to uphold the Constitution, they have an oath to remind you that you have those responsibilities. So the Constitution is the basic framework, the, the let's put it, the foundation on which everything in this country is to be driven by. This is a personal question, sir, and I didn't ask you this. Do you believe it was divinely written? I do. I, I believe that uh, that there was uh, divine in inspiration in that document. Some kind of intervention, no doubt. Yeah. You bet. I do too. It, it's just a beautiful document. Next question from them, from the TT. What is your jurisdiction within the government? I'm the chief law enforcement executive in the Spokane County, and uh, I hold a constitutional office within the state of Washington, so my office is actually in the state's constitution. And uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that that's not necessarily the way it is for all sheriffs. Uh, there are actually sh uh, states that don't have sheriffs at all. Correct. There are states that, are, that have done away with uh, the office of sheriff. There are states that have taken the uh, office of sheriff's uh, arrest powers away. So one of the things I think that there's a really a, a misinformation campaign that's been going on for several years is that sheriffs, it really depends on what the state constitution says because the office of the sheriff is not in the United States Constitution. And in the state of Washington, my position can be either elected or appointed depending on the form of government that the county decides it's going to have. Correct. The last appointed sheriff was in Pierce County, 
um, and that Pierce County has gone back to being elected. Uh, King County and Pierce County were at one point appointed. So the Office of Sheriff is really dictated by its state's constitution in the state that it resides. And aren't you coming up for an election next? I am. Next question, sir. What happens when a situation you're involved in, when you're involved in overlaps or is taken over by another agency, such as a federal agency? Are you allowed to monitor the situation, or can they just enter your county with no word, for, word to you? When we're engaged in something um, within my county, I'm the chief law enforcement executive. Yes. Um, I, I will be there. I, I will be kept apprised of things. And there's no coming in and taking things over. It's uh, a partnership with everybody realizing that the sheriff is the, uh, the chief law enforcement executive in the, in the county. And final word. Final word. You are the final word. Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions left. Let's see. Have you ever been asked to enforce an action or law which was blatantly unconstitutional? Not once in 24 years of law enforcement duty have I ever had a, that situ situation come across. Have you heard of any other sheriffs maybe? Have I've, a... I've never heard of anybody ever being, because if it's, if it's against law or if it's unconstitutional, we can't do it. And I think that's where everybody comes up with, with some of the, the questions that uh, they get asked. People need to understand the sheriff cannot do something that's un unconstitutional. Correct. We would go, potentially, could go to prison if we did that. Correct. Right. So all the questions about what would you do if something unconstitutional, well, you can't do something unconstitutional. And if something unconstitutional was happening, your job is to prevent it and stop it. So I think everybody just needs to understand that it, you, the Constitution is the framework in which law enforcement resides. Law enforcement cannot go outside that framework. If law enforcement goes outside the framework of the Constitution, then law enforcement is held heavily accountable and up to the point that the leadership can go to, pr to prison for, for violating the Constitution. Vicarious liability. Exactly. Correct. I have a question for you. <clears throat> What's your stance on the Second Amendment? Uh, that, that is one of my, my flagship uh, areas. Uh, Second Amendment says exactly what it says. It's an individual right to bear arms. The courts, Supreme Courts have uh, verified that, I believe, three or four times over the last five years. And living in the state of Washington, we actually have more gun rights than the federal Constitution gives us. Uh, mm -hmm. It is very s clearly stipulated in the Washington State Constitution that it is an individual right. So the, the Second Amendment, um, it's in full force and effect, and um, yeah, it's going to take two thirds of the states or or the Senate to do away with that. Um, I, you know, if you ask about law enforcement in general, there's a poll that's done uh, every year in law enforcement from uh, international chiefs of police. The question is asked: Should citizens have the right to bear arms uh, for self protection? Up until last year, 98% of all the law enforcement leaders that took that survey said yes, 98%. Last year, uh, after the Sandy Hook, that number went down to 89%. So, you know, we have to make sure that we do everything in our power to protect our, our gun rights. We also need to make sure the government is really dealing with the true issues that are causing some of this gun violence. And that's the mental health issues in this country. If we do not start working to deal with the mental health issues that this country faces, we're going to, we're going to be facing more and more of these deadly situations. A catastrophe. Exactly. And it it doesn't have to be a gun. There are explosives and yes. everything else. So I'm very much, and I push very hard, for the mental health issues to be resolved. In my opinion, the United States has stepped away from that issue. The states have stepped away with that issue. They've kicked it down to the local level. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Spokane County Jail is the only jail in the state of Washington that is certified to deal with mental health issues. We, we saw the issue, and we're working to fix the issue. And it's not the gun isn't the problem. 
No, it's behavior. That's right. And, you know, quite frankly, I grew up in a, time, a day and time where, in hunting season, there were guns in every gun rack in the <laughs> high school parking lot. And the doors left open. Exactly. While you went to class. And none of those guns were ever <laughs> stolen. Yep. None of those guns ever came into the school and shot anybody. Yep. What have we done as a society? And I get asked this often, Sheriff, how do you deal with, you know, what's the secret to, uh, you know, the violence and everything else? Take it back to the simple framework of life. If we teach each other, treat each other with respect, and teach certain core responsibilities and philosophies, values, such as do unto others, love one another, you're not going to have that violence. You have to get back to the core values that made this nation great. And we've lost that. In many respects. We, 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 we've lost the family element. We've lost trust amongst each other. Yes. Uh, just to acquire trust is, is a very arduous task. Yeah. That's why I missed the military. In the military, you had that bonding. I guess that'll be it, unless right. you have anything else to share. And I'm going to give you one right now. I don't know, you've probably never heard of it before. 10 to 10. If you can live your life 10 to 10, you're going to be just fine. Now, what is that? 10 commandments. Two simple things that the Savior said. Do unto others and love one another. And abide by the 10, the Bill of Rights, which reflects back to the Constitution. You're probably going to be fine in life if you just simply live 10 to 10. Some of those Ten Commandments at times can be rough. <laughs> Sheriff, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you.